Anza has 20 to 21,000 students, depending upon the term. It's a big place. Um, at least 1,500 of those students are undocumented. There are probably another 2,000 students who are in families that have undocumented persons in them. This institution represents one of the few social democratic inventions in the United States, um, in a country largely bereft of, of social democracy. Unions fought really, really hard for universal K-12 education throughout the United States. Um, the creation of community colleges followed on that same idea that there should be universal and as free as you could make it education for everyone who is going to participate in the society. We have multiple and overlapping resources for undocumented students. The principal one being organized by the undocumented students themselves. There's a very active student movement here called HEFAS, Higher Education for AB 540 students. They operate an independent center, they have faculty advising, they have legal resources, they have all kinds of orientation materials for undocumented students, what resources are available to you, how to get them. And we're part of a network of organizations that are working with undocumented communities. Every frontline staff person at the college has been trained in how to respond to inquiries. They are all to be directed here and absent um, a subpoena or court order with a name spelled correctly, we will not cooperate. It's a sort of set of principles, and that is uh, an acceptance that persons are welcome here regardless of their legal status, period. That means specifically here that we do outreach to local high schools in which we are extremely clear that persons without legal documentation are welcome, that we have programs and resources for them. It's not even arguable whether or not it's a community you should serve. It's part of your general, our general mission to serve our community. But the fact of legal residency is in every way that you could possibly imagine completely irrelevant to us. Except now, insofar as we have to be more attentive to the particular needs that might come out of um, the kind of campaign of reaction and white supremacy, which is now afoot. in the middle 60s and uh, I think the real origins of it were the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement. I mean, I, that is the formative political work of my life was in that, those periods of time. And this work is for many men and women my age or my generation, it's an extension of that work. So I would never imagine that there's one size fits all or one approach fits all. But in any instance, you've got organizers from the undocumented community anyway. And so the degree to which you listen and privilege those voices, as opposed to other voices, strikes me as a, a valuable and good thing to do. Like any institution, we're a bureaucracy, we have a hierarchy, authority moves sort of upward in that sense. So if you're the president in that kind of institution, you'd better be clear where you stand.